Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and we're going to do a little bit of troubleshooting with this iPhone application. So if you're stuck, uh, I want to go over some of the common problems and what you'll see when you're working with this. I would say the most common problem is when we're working with the interface builder and we're connecting it to code and we mess something up. So let's switch to our .h file along the top here. And let's accidentally modify something. So let's say we accidentally deleted this line of code. Now, if we were to run the application by pressing the run button, uh, first we're gonna see that the app didn't work. So actually let's undo that. And that's another issue. So you'll see a, a warning like that. Now let's, let's do this again. And I'm gonna go ahead, delete this line of code, and then I'm gonna to switch to the .m file. And so right now it's complaining that weeks text field doesn't exist. So that's because we just deleted it. If I were to come in out this line of code by just doing the hotkey command forward slash, that can show and hide a line of code, or you can just type slash slash. Now, if we run, if we're, we're working with this, we see that the, the warning goes away. So now if we run again, the build succeeds and all of a sudden, what just happened? The app crashed. And the way we can find out what's going on is we'll see that we're in the main.m file. This line is highlighted and we see thread one signal sig abort. And so that's a signal abort. And that means something broke. So something's not right. Our, our first clue after that happens is we need to look at the console window on this right side. So you can hide our variables view on the left side to just make this bigger. And we can look at what prints after it says first run. So here we see a NS unknown key exception and we see set value for undefined key. This class is not key value code in compliant for the key weeks text field. So here we've run into an issue with our interface file trying to connect to a piece of code that doesn't exist anymore. And, and this is a common thing that can cause your application to crash before it even starts. And that's because it can't connect our code to the interface file. So if we look in our interface file again, and we check out our weeks text view, we're gonna see that there's a warning up top and that's not the warning we care about. So I'll just right click here. And it still thinks that the, the weeks text field exists. So if I get rid of that referencing outlet, I hit the X mark. Now our application will run. And occasionally you'll get a message um, that the simulator won't start. You can usually just start it. We put in a value. We don't see anything happening. And that's because the, the connection isn't there. So if something's not happening, that's uh, another thing you're gonna have to fix. So we're gonna have to go back to our assistant editor that's clicking on the tuxedo. And I'll switch back to our dot M file. So I'm gonna go back to automatic and then the dot H file. And here we need to, to reconnect our outlet. So let's drag it over and we're gonna go with outlet. From here, we can type in weeks text field and hit connect. So if we do all that, then we can jump back to our .m file and we'll wanna fix the line of code that we commented out. So just so you can see that we commented out this line of code, so we'll uncomment it by taking away the slashes, we can stop and then rerun. Now we can click on these, type something, hit convert. So that's a common mistake. If you accidentally remove a curly brace, you can also run into issues where you'll get all kinds of warnings along the left side of your code. 
And these you need to sort of look around and try and troubleshoot what's going on so that you can find out the problem. So if we click on this, it says expected method body and expected colon. So those aren't very helpful. And so when we're working with methods, we always have to remember that in the .m file, we need to have a starting or a, a left curly brace and a right curly brace, and they need to match. So if that's an issue, you deleted something or you, you mistyped something, your application will also not run. So we'll just put that back. And, and now let's look at, well, what if we take one of these away? And all I have to do is type it, and then we'll see the warning appear it says expected method body. If, if you ever have red on your screen and you try to run something, it will say build failed. So that's what it says in the middle here. And you can just look and see what's happening. Again, we're having an issue. It has a little carrot right here that's showing us that it thinks something's wrong right here. So we can just fix that by putting a left parenthesis. And much like the curly braces, parentheses need to match. So we have a left one and we have a right one. If we are ever missing one, then we'll have an issue where something doesn't work. Now in Objective-C, we can have a method that has no parameters. And we can have a method that has a parameter. Anytime we have a parameter, we'll always see a, a colon here, and then we'll see the type of the parameter, which will be in parentheses. And in this case, it's a UI button object. And we can see it's an object because we see the asterisk or the star here. So UI button is a class name, and the star means that it's a pointer, and then the name of our parameter. So this method is invoked from the UI button that we connected it to. If you accidentally connect too many things, sometimes you can add too many text fields. So we could add another text field and you'll just have more properties. So we get the weeks text field and then we have just the text field. We can remove those extra ones if you just right click or two finger tap on a trackpad and then hit the X if you don't need both of them. And most likely when you're first starting out, you'll only want one referencing outlet for something. So those are, are some of the, the common issues that I see with a lot of beginners. If you have any other issues, don't feel afraid to shoot me an email. Uh, now that I deleted that, this line of code can also be deleted. You'll notice that the, the circle is not filled in. So we can just get rid of that by pressing the delete key and we can save and rerun our application. So that's um, some, some tips for getting started with your first iPhone app. Uh, again, if we're looking at the code a little bit more, we have to make sure that we we type everything right. So NSLog has a capital N, S, and L, and then lowercase everything else. If you mistype this, you'll probably see some kind of weird warning about a C style function. So implicit declaration of function NSLog is invalid in C99. So that's an issue, and probably if we ran this, we wouldn't see what we expected or things won't work. And if we click on this little triangle, we'll see the warnings, or we can click on this, and we see that uh, NSLog undefined symbol is referenced. And so everything looks correct, except that the capitalization is wrong. And so a little mistake like this can send you down a loop where you're like, I don't understand why it's not working what the what the crap is a, a linker error and so this is all because we mistyped something and so when that happens just double check to make sure because everything what we're doing is going to be case sensitive so if there's uppercase letters that i'm typing you need to type those same ones again down here if you mistype something like float and, and you did flat we would have an issue and sometimes Xcode can offer us solutions. So it's asking us if we meant float instead of flat. And so we can just click on this and it will, if we double click, it will fix it for us. If we're missing any of our square braces, again, like the curly braces, our square braces need to match. Xcode can sometimes tell us how to fix these things so it can insert a square bracket for us. 
if you mistype and, and leave out a, a period or something, you're going to see an issue and then it's going to give you a suggestion. This suggestion works, but it's not the same as what we had already written, so I'll just put it back to what we had. So carefully read over the lines. Um, make sure that you have your semicolons at the end of a line. If you don't, you'll have uh, an issue, and Xcode can suggest to fix some of these. Um, one of the, the last ones I want to show you is if we don't use an Objective-C string, we can just run this, and we'll see incompatible pointer types, and again, we have a, a build failure we're trying to convert from a Objective C string into a C string, and so that's not allowed and that won't run. So here, look for the little caret and then put an at symbol in front of any Objective C string that you want to print out with NSLog. So these are a lot of the common mistakes. If you're still having issues with your program and you can't figure it out, just start over. Just create a new Xcode project. Retype the code. It's it's that repetition and that practice where when things aren't working and you, you try again and again, and then you figure out, okay, that was my mistake. That's where you're going to learn a lot when you're doing coding. It's, it's a little bit tedious at first as you work with it. Uh, I think you'll start to understand and start to look for the different patterns and, and the common issues that you run into so that you can avoid them the next time. All right, so that's it for the introduction troubleshooting. Again, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email, paulsolt at iphonedev.tv.